Hey guys, today I wanted to bring you something a little bit different. I had this idea in mind for a little while where we can grab some anime backgrounds and do a little breakdown of the style and its components and see what works and why certain choices are made a certain way. And for this first episode, I'm bringing you Heike Monogatari, which is a beautiful anime. If you guys haven't seen it, I recommend it. Uh, it's set in feudal Japan, and it's uh, the story of this clan called Heike or Taiga, uh, if I recall correctly. But anyway, let's take a look at the artwork, right? So I would say that the main component of this style is that it's very, very graphic. You know, even if we have some gradients of color, because you can see the leaves uh, change from green to orange, um, everything is pretty flat. Like there is not a lot of painting going on. There is not soft edges and things like that. It's pretty graphic. And we can see going on with other backgrounds that this uh, is reinforced and it's very apparent in a piece like this one. At the same time, even if we have this very graphic style, I want to say that I think overall shapes and proportions are pretty much in the realistic realm because you can see all of these branches and all the, you know, the silhouette of this tree is very, very um, accurate, like there's a lot of detail. So I think despite being very graphic and stylized, it's also in terms of at least proportions and silhouette, it's going more toward realism. You can see even in the building itself um, goes more toward that way. And uh, another element, I think it's pretty important besides, you know, this graphic and the silhouette is that the colors aren't that strong. They are not very saturated. Like there's some of it, of course, you know, in the bridge and shadows are a little bit more saturated, but overall the impact of the piece is that it's, uh, it's less color colorful. It's more uh, desaturated. And I think part of that choice is made to reinforce the setting because, you know, bringing down the colors, I think, um, gives us a more nostalgic feel to it, you know, because old movies and old photographs didn't have very vibrant color because the technology wasn't there. So I think making this choice uh, reinforced the overall setting being uh, feudal Japan. Another thing that we can pay attention to here is that we have some line art in certain places here and there. You can see it in the building here. It's very thin. It's not very obvious, uh, but it's there in a few places to, you know, separate some elements. And it's just, you know, part of the taste and part of the style, I would say. And let's take a look at this other piece, which is, again, I, I really love this anime, not just for the story and everything, but also the style. I think it's really, really cool. You can see here the steps, how graphic they are, like between light and ambient light and shadow. It's all very, very graphic. And you can see again the line art in the trees and a little bit in the foliage here in the foreground. But overall, the elements of the style are the ones that we already defined so far. So why is the style made this way? You know, they could have gone different directions, they could have done different things. So why uh, do I think, because of course this is all my theory and speculation and opinion, but I would say that this particular style, very graphic, comes from ukiyo-e illustrations. And if you're familiar with Japan, they are these very pretty but very graphic illustrations of feudal Japan. And they, I think they basically tried to capture these um, aesthetic because the story is actually a real story. It's not a fictional piece. It comes from um, an epic that was written uh, in those times. And I think 
That's the reason why they tried to capture the style to bring it closer to its roots. And this is why everything is, you know, very, very graphic and treated the way it is. To just bring it back to this old, um, this old style of illustration. But there is, there is one but, there is a little thing that uh, deviates from everything which is right at the end of the anime, after the story is being told, there is a shift of style. And I don't know if you guys have seen it and if you noticed it, uh, it took me a little to um, realize this, but you can see from this piece, and this is, you know, no spoilers, but this is at the end of the anime. And you can see that the style is quite different. I wouldn't say it's 100% different, but you know, comparing these to something like this, you can see it's it's very obvious. You know, the colors are more vibrant, and we go back to a more watercolor approach to the style. It's more impressionistic in the leaves. We have a lot of you know line to indicate texture uh, on the bark, something that wasn't done before. And you can see a lot of soft edges that we didn't really have before and more shots from the end same you can see all the grasses very very painterly it's not graphic at all and one more so why was there a complete change of style my opinion my idea of it is that the whole series is basically a recollection of the tale being told um, by the main character and since it's the tale being told they use this more graphic style closer to ukiyo-e and the original epic to tie it closer to there so this part is after the story is more like okay we are back in the real world it's not the the word of the tale so they decided to change the style completely and go a completely different way so the viewer might subconsciously feel that you know it's we're not quite in the same place anymore um storytelling wise i think that that's a very clever idea and it's something that if done this well can really add a lot of emphasis on your mood and storytelling so i think Really, uh, Science Saru, which is the studio that made the anime, really did a fantastic job. And I would um, super recommend you guys go and watch it if you haven't seen seen it already. Um, so yeah, to recap, main, main features of the style is that it's very graphic, realistic proportions and uh, details overall, I would say. Uh, colors aren't really that uh, strong. You can see even in the scene, they're pretty pretty desaturated uh, and there's a little bit of line art used here and there right so this is a overall breakdown of the style which again changes completely toward the end of the anime for storytelling reason i hope you guys like this episode i uh, think i might just do some where i also do a little painting to demonstrate you know how could you make a tree in the style of heke monogatari or clouds or whatever uh, let me know if you think that is useful because we can totally do that. But for now, we're just going to do this um, theory breakdown, see why the style looks the way it does, and the reasoning behind the choices. Because I always think that knowing the reason behind something, a style choice, is always powerful and useful. Because then you can understand why things look the way they do and you can make more informed choices in your own painting that is all for today's episode and i hope you guys to see you next time let me know what you thought of this one but until then bye bye